Welcome to our review on cooking. First thing we need to understand when thinking about cooking is what's actually happening. So when we're cooking, we're looking at a chemical change. Now we can identify a chemical change has happened if we've made a new substance, if it's an irreversible change, and if an energy change has happened. So they're the three ways that we can identify that a chemical change has occurred. So if we consider one type of food that might be cooked quite often in your own homes, if we think about eggs and meat, both of them are very good sources of protein. And when we actually cook eggs and meat, their appearance and their text texture changes. Now, what we'll find is you can't change them back. So we can't reverse that change. Once you've cooked an egg, then you can't turn it back into a raw egg afterwards. And the reason behind that is the protein molecules that make up the eggs and the meat have changed shape. And this is called denaturing. And that denaturing of proteins is an irreversible change. Therefore, it is a chemical change. If we consider our carbohydrates next then, potatoes are a carbohydrate and they contain lots of this chemical called starch. Now, if we compare a raw potato and a cooked potato, our cooked potato is much softer and it's easier to digest than the raw one. And the reason behind that is when we cook potato, the cell walls are gonna break down. So that means our potato becomes softer because the cell walls give it that structure. We'll also find the starch grains that were kept within those cells are released and they can then absorb water from obviously the solution it's cooked in and that means that they're going to swell up. And when they do that, again, it adds to the softness and it makes it far easier to digest in our bodies. The last thing we need to consider when we're thinking about our chemistry and cooking is baking powder. Now, anytime you've made a cake, hopefully you remember to add the baking powder to it. Because if you didn't, you'd have had this rather flat, sad looking cake. Because baking powder is going to make cakes rise as they're cooked. So baking powder contains this chemical called sodium hydrogen carbonate. And when we heat sodium hydrogen carbonate, it breaks down to make three things. It makes sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide, and water. So you can see both the word and symbol equations in the middle there. And again, practice balancing those symbol equations. Now, what we're seeing is a type of reaction called a thermal decomposition reaction. And they do like to ask you what thermal decomposition means. So all you'd need to write down there is that it's breaking down a substance when it's heated. So that'd be worth two marks, one for saying it breaks down, second one for saying it's heated. Now we can actually test to make sure that we are making carbon dioxide, and I'm not just lying to you, if we actually have lime water. So if you connect in a delivery tube into a test tube with some lime water, you heat your sodium hydrogen carbonate, then a gas is gonna bubble through into the lime water. And when you watch, it will go from colorless to cloudy, which tells us carbon dioxide is present. Make sure we do learn those terms colorless to cloudy. Don't use any other word for colorless because a lot of them aren't accepted on the exam mark schemes. So remember, lime water goes from colorless to cloudy when carbon dioxide is present.